Hello guys, my name is Remik, and in today's video we'll talk about .NET Aspire, how to use .NET Aspire, how to create the sample starter application, and then how to very easily deploy this kind of app into the Azure cloud with the usage of Azure Developer CLI. If you haven't subscribed my channel yet, then please hit the subscribe button down below, write the comment, give me a like, and now as always, now we're going straight into the code. All right, so .NET Aspire, what it actually is and why it's so important to know at least the basics of .NET Aspire. So .NET Aspire is the comprehensive cloud-ready development stack introduced with .NET 8 and so on and so forth. As you see on the screen, is the cloud-ready stack for building observable, production-ready, distributed applications. And what does it actually mean? So in just seconds, you can create from the starter template the application that will look like this. So you have the dashboard where you have three types of resources because we have selected just to use the Redis cache, a .NET Web API, and also Blazor frontend. And as you see, we have the console, we can select each resource that we were referring to, and we can see the logs. We can structure the logs as well. We can see the traces, metrics, and so on. And actually this, this is done automatically by this template, by this .NET Aspire. And as you see, we have the container that is running in Docker and this container has the Redis inside of it. We can also access the web API, but it's also the basic web API that is built always with the weather forecast. And also we can see the Blazor frontend of course, we have the counter and whoever that is fetched from this API. And as you see, we can use this kind of .NET Aspire to create that kind of application in just a second. And then it would be very easy also to deploy this into the Azure and it will care of also the orchestration of all of those components. And also it has the tooling that it's integrated with the Visual Studio and .NET CLI that is offering the project templates and pre-configured components to streamline development and also that it will be scaling appropriately. All right, guys, so before starting to work with .NET Inspire, you have to make sure that you have Docker Desktop installed in your machine. If you have Docker Desktop already, then next thing is just to double check if you have .NET 8 installed in your machine. If yes, then to check if you have already the latest update of the Visual Studio 2022 or the Rider ID with .NET Aspire support because we would like to use the starter application template in order to create the sample app and then deploy this to the Azure. And the last thing, just to check if you have .NET Aspire workload installed. If you don't have .NET Aspire workload, then you have to use those following two commands. So in your command line, you can use .NET workload update and then to use .NET workload install Aspire. In order to create .NET Aspire starter app, you have to search for this kind of template in your Visual Studio or Rider .NET Aspire starter app. We can select this one and we will just uh, name this as the Aspire application with the location and the create in the new folder. I'll next, we'll use the .NET 8 with the long-term support and we can just check also this option to use Redis for caching. We'll click create and as you see, we have already the API service, application host, service defaults and web application, which is the Blazor application. In fact, it was everything added automatically based on this starter app .NET Aspire template. And we can just go one by one and check what's inside of all of those. So we have API service, which has one endpoint that is returning for us the weather forecasts and it's consumed by our Blazor application because it has the weather API client and it gets all of those uh, weather forecast from our API service. Also, we have the service defaults where we have the extensions class. And as you see, the whole magic with the open telemetry health checks and the service discovery has been done here automatically based on the starter template. So if it's everything added automatically. You can, of course, uh, modify the content of that class, but mm, for now, as you see, we have also some kind of the commented lines that you can uncomment. And as you see, the 
needs to connect to the application insights based on the connection string uh, if you have already the application insights in your Azure resource group. And also we have the health checks and map default endpoints just to have the health and also the alive in that case. And the app host is the place where it actually binds all of those components together. And as you see, we have the builder distributed application create builder based on the arguments. And then very easily the Redis cache is added. And also here you can use the other methods to add, for instance, the Azure service bus, and it will be very easily done as well. We have the API service just to add the project API service with the name of the API service. And then we have the web frontend and it has the external HTTP endpoints with the reference to the cache and with the reference to the API service and everything is connected properly together. And now in order to deploy our .NET Aspire application into Azure, we have to install Azure Developer CLI. So we have to open up the PowerShell and use this command that is written in the documentation. So I'll just do that. So win get install microsoft.azd. Now to prepare our .NET Aspire app to be ready for deployment into the Azure cloud, we have to use the following command in the solution folder. So it will be azd in it. How do you want to initialize your app and use code in the current directory? I will just select this one. Scanning app code in our directory. As you see, it automatically detected the app host. So I will just confirm and continue initializing my application. And now it wants me to add the new environment name. So it will be, for instance, 5hs123 gg22. As you see, it's generating the files to run up on Azure. So the YAML file and also the next steps markdown file. And as you see, it was generated. So as you see, it created for us the azure.yaml file and also the next dash steps markdown file. What should be done next after the ASD init command? And now we have to log in into our Azure developer CLI. So we'll use the azd auth login command. And then you will be able to pick your account into the Microsoft Azure and then you will be successfully logged in. As you see, after selecting my account in Microsoft Azure, I have the message that authentication is complete. You can return to the application free to close this browser tab. And as you see here, also we have the message that we are logged in to the Azure. And now once we are logged into the Azure, we can use the following command. So it will be azd app. And now you have to select Azure subscription to be used. So I'll use my Visual Studio Enterprise subscription. And now we have to select the Azure location to be used. So I will use the Poland Central. So as you see with the usage of the azd app command, everything has been properly deployed into the Azure. So as you see, we had the progress bars for the deploying service API service and also the service cache and web frontend and also the Aspire dashboard. So now we can go into the Azure and to check if actually everything was properly deployed. So as we see, we are in our resource group that we have called HHH123GG22. And as you see, we have the cache, we have API service and web frontend. And we can just check this web frontend if it will be up and running or not. So here we have the application URL, we have the container apps environment, and we have everything properly connected together. And 
Now, when I will just open up this web frontend, we see that we have our Aspire application, we have the counter, and also we have the weather that, as you saw just a second ago, it loaded a little bit, so it fetched the data from our API. And now, once I have copied the URL to our Aspire dashboard that was generated in our PowerShell, we can see that it's everything one-to-one -one the same as we have done this in our local host. So we have three containers, we have API service, Redis cache and web frontend, everything is up and running, we have the start time and also the endpoints. Now we can also check the traces and as you see we have everything that what was requested from our web frontend, so when we were checking if our web frontend is up and running or not. So we can also see the structured logs and also the console for each of the resources. So as you see, it's very easy to deploy .NET Aspire app into the Azure cloud.